Hi, Gemini. <clears throat> Welcome back. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. This is your Drunk Tarot, Drunk Tarot read for August, September 2018. We're going to do who is coming in for you for love for August 2018. This is strictly for those looking for love. What can you expect for the month of August? I know Gemini's have come through a lot of shit recently, uh, but there will be absolutely no sign of your ex in this read. I'm only pulling to see what is coming towards you. Who is coming towards the Gemini in love? And then I'm gonna pull one card for your money, because that was the second runner up. One card for money at the end of this um, for Gemini's. And this is, of course, reminder, general reading. I don't think I have to do that anymore, but Gemini, what's coming through for Gemini's for the month of August in terms of love? What can they expect? What, what should they look out for? Gemini's looking for love. Gemini's looking for love. Who is this person they can expect in August? There is someone, the, the universe is pushing you and someone towards each other. So you guys are, are coming closer together. If you haven't already met this person yet, the universe is connecting you guys, bringing you guys close together. That's for sure. Um, this person, you maybe, because you're at the top here, you probably, You, some of you guys might be feeling like, and you don't, you know, you have good confidence level. You, you know, you, you value yourselves. That's for sure. But in this particular case, this person has you feeling like you might be punching above your weight. You feel like you're getting away with something with this person. And, um, which is not a bad thing. You know, it's nice to have a feeling of, damn, like I can't believe I'm scoring this person. That's always a nice feeling, and as long as you express that, like you make that person feel that, it's a good thing. Obviously, it doesn't diminish your value or your self-confidence when you feel that way. It's just a good sort of moment where you're like, damn, I scored? Like, I got lucky? You know, and if you express that to your partner, your potential partner, they're going to feel that, and they're going to feel just as lucky that they have someone who feels that way about them, you know? And it just goes back and forth. You and this person are going to be very playful. You're going to, be, when you're with this person, you're going to feel extremely playful and flirty, and you're going to be lots of giggling, lots of you know rolling around in the hay and rolling around in the sack, lots of laughter in bed, cute jokes, really flirtatious, really good energy, very childlike energy. Um, yeah, you know, there's there's sex, there's sex there. Like you guys have this chemistry with each other and it feels really good. Um, also be careful that you're not, when you're with this person, be honest. And you are honest, I think. Um, but just, if there's something you feel like you need to hide from them because you feel like you're punching above your weight, because you feel like, they're, they're too good for me or they're so great that I don't want to say anything that's going to make them think of me in a, in a bad way. Or I don't want to tell them the truth about, you know, my, my student loan debt or whatever the fuck. I don't want to tell them about that because they're too good for me or whatever, right? Be careful you don't head down that path. Because it seems like with the chariot card here, it's a great beginning. It's great movement forward. It's a great potential relationship. And so what you don't want to do is start off on the wrong foot and get dig into the chemistry, dig into how good it is and everything, but then just sort of like brush over the important things that lead to a strong foundation in a long-term relationship. Does that make sense? So there's that. 
Now, this other person you're dealing with, this person who's coming through, this could feel like one of two things. The Six of Cups reverse is not a great card because it's a card of not being able to, of dwelling on past things. So this person, if this person is from your past, I don't want to say they are. I don't think they are. If this person is from your past, however, you should be able to move forward. The chariot card wants you guys to move forward, move past, move beyond past issues. This person doesn't seem to be able to let go of shit you might have done in the past. Um, and if you are expressive about your, your history or whatever has gone wrong, if you, if you do have history with this person and you say, look, we fucked up, you fucked up, I fucked up, let's, let's get, can we just move past it? You're like, yeah, I'm down to move past it, let's move on. This person is not going to be able to move on. And that could be a major issue. Um, and that's just for some of you guys, but fuck the ex, I'm not doing ex readings. This person, the other thing is that this person that comes in, they can't let go of their past. All right. So in certain conversations with this person, you're going to pick up like them talking about their ex or them uh, sort of dwelling on past mistakes or issues, past trauma from even their fucking childhood. And that's kind of a turn off because it's like, hey, you got to fix your own shit before you try to dive into a relationship. Right. Like, don't, you know, I'm trying to have a spaghetti and meatballs with you and you're talking about, you know, shit that that is you know not only ruining my fucking meal but you know and that's that sounds very like like you're it's not about being empathetic that's not the point the point is that if they bring their baggage or their issues into this new relationship with you that could be a turnoff because it's not fair to you if for you to have spent time to solve your traumas and your issues and your relationship woes to be a healthier person in a new relationship and they're not yet. Because then what? What are you what happens? It's not a healthy relationship if you're constantly trying to work on this person's traumas with them. And it's not about being selfish, it's not about not being empathetic or having a lack of empathy. It's just the reality of a healthy relationship. Is that we understand our issues, you've worked on yours, I've worked on mine, now we can come together. And the, the chariot card here is trying to do that for you, but if this person who comes into your life is consistently bringing up issues, or the reason why I'm doing this is because of X, Y, Z, or the reason why I react this way is because of X, Y, Z, or the reason why blah, 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 is because of X, Y, Z, that's a problem. And because I, and then the reason why I say that is a reason I'm not just talking shit. The reason I'm saying that is because with the nine of wands in reverse next to the six of cups in reverse, next to the fucking ten of swords in reverse, I'm saying this person that you're meeting is solid and you feel, let me see if I can word this correctly, you feel as if you scored big time with this person. And so maybe you're feeling like I don't want to tell them about my student loan debt or that I cheated on an ax or that I you know, have this, per, you know, personality flaw because I don't want to ruin a good thing with them because we've got the page of wands. We're so excited about each other. But the reality is that this person is punching above their weight with you. They have past trauma. They have past break, heartbreak, betrayal, deceit. They can't get rid of the, the, they can't stop thinking or even talking about their ex or their issues from the past. And to top it off, this person could have some sort of mental imbalance with the Nine of Wands in reverse. There's a feeling of total anxiety and confusion and um, possibly depression. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff that this person has gone through or is going through now. And so the universe is trying to bring you guys together, but to what end, I don't know. Um, this person is not a bad person they're just going through shit and so i guess the advice for this would be for you to decide if you want to take on this person's baggage that's that's the that's the end of it like that's the that's the whole point because this person is coming into your life this person is in your life soon um if they're not already there and you 
have to decide if you and this person are going to go the distance when you take into consideration all the things that they've gone through or are going through. If you are up for that challenge, if you think that this is this relationship is worth it, you know, you could just say, let's be friends and, you know, I, I wish you the best and then just support them as a friend uh, as they go through their issues. Because the thing is, once you're locked in to this relationship, a Gemini is a Gemini is pretty right or die. And so I've seen Geminis stay with people who are no good just across the board just because the Gemini has the um, ability to say I'm loyal I would never do that and they stand by that and they're good they're good like that however it's detrimental to your well-being you know when you're finally out of that it's like I did my best I tried my best to be supportive you know with this person and I have nothing to show for it other than I was a supportive partner. You know, and if that's enough for you, then that's great. If that's not enough for you, then you might want to rethink this, uh, this situation coming up. Okay? So this person is possibly, um, you know, this person's probably a, a cancer. Let's see if I can see who else this person might be. This person's a, either a Cancer or a Capricorn or a Virgo. Definitely, um, this person has some issues, you guys. So I just, you know, and I think you guys might like hook up immediately. Um, if not, that flirtation, that chemistry is there immediately, and you feel that. Um, Yeah, I mean, so this person is for sure one of those signs I said, but of course it could be any sign. I'm just giving you guys personalities to look out for. There is a connection there. There's a chemistry. They have deep issues. You could feel like you're batting above or you're swinging above, what is it? Punching above your weight, but they are. But the truth is that they actually have more issues than you. <laughs> and so they actually have some stuff that they are going through and you need to work it out for yourself whether you want to do it or not. This person is going to be like, I am totally recovered from that. I'm not that way anymore. I'm healthy minded and I'm really, really going to be showing off for you and really like trying to impress you with how healthy they are now and how um, good they are now. They're going to be really, really like, I swear I'm healthy now. I don't do that shit anymore. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm paying off my gambling debt. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. They're like for real going to try. Um, and I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying these are things that you need to look out for in terms of what you're looking for in love, Gemini, for the month of August. So just uh, be aware of that. That's just happening around you. You know, you're, you're, the Gemini is good at, you guys don't judge. You guys are solid fucking people in terms of um, what's normal, what's not normal in society. And who is anyone to judge? Like, you're good like that. Uh, just be careful that when you do extend that patience and that open-heartedness you're not doing it to you know your own personal detriment you know what I mean like where you're just like damn I'm fucking totally depleted financially emotionally energetically and now I need to you know recover for a year before I'm back in the saddle like if you see the red flags uh, for a potential partner that I just mentioned you know maybe you know you do what you're gonna do but just know that Drunk Tarot told you that shit. All right. Let's pull one card for money. How's your money doing? Gemini money in August. So it looks like you guys are going to have moments where I think bills are going to, you're going to be like, oh shit, I forgot to pay this bill. So it's a matter of maybe in August you should sort through all your bills and, and figure out what, like sometimes I forget that I have a Hulu account, you know, and I'm like, oh shit, like it takes out $10 a month and I, I don't even watch Hulu. 
So it's like these things are, are coming up where you're like, all right, I forgot about this bill, I forgot about that bill. So these hidden fees, hidden fees, hidden bills, hidden subscriptions that you forgot about that you don't even use, maybe go back and look at that stuff in August and see what you can eliminate and to help you out. Also, it could just be that um, maybe check your pay stubs because I think that also in August, you could be feeling like you're owed vacation hours or you know something that has to do with your money so basically a reveal like you have to uncover some sort of um, hidden financial woes or fees or whatever the fuck that comes up in August so just be on the lookout for some hidden shit in August okay thank you so much Gemini hopefully this helped um, I will see you in your September readings and don't forget to follow me on Instagram drunk.tarot bye